scams, feuds, bankruptcy, and broken family ties, were all products of the Jackson's 1984 victory tour was riddled with issues that would leave strained relationships with promoters as well as the Jackson family, forever. The 1984 Jackson's Victory Tour which ran from July to December 1984 was the first and only tour with all six Jackson brothers. The group performed 55 concerts to an audience of over 2 million. Many came to see Michael, whose album Thriller was dominating the popular music world at the time. Many consider it to be his Thriller tour, with most of the songs on the setlist coming from his Thriller and Off the Wall albums. Michael sang all the lead vocals, Paul Abdul choreographed the tour and Eddie Van Halen made a special guest appearance doing the Beat It. At the time the tour set a new record for the highest grossing tour. It showcased Michael's single decorated glove, black sequin jacket, and moonwalk. Despite its focus on Michael, it was named after the Jackson's album Victory. The album was released four days before the tour's first show. The tour would feature none of the album's songs. Jermaine had a new album out at the time, Dynamite, and some material from that album was performed. According to Marlon, Michael refused to rehearse or perform any of the songs from Victory. Marlon also stated that Michael had only reluctantly joined his brothers, who needed the income while he himself did not. On the tour, tensions between Michael and his brothers increased so much that at the December 9th concert he announced that it would be the last time they would perform together, ending plans for a European and Australian leg of the tour in the spring and summer of 1985. The Jacksons and promoter Don King did make money from the tour. Michael donated his share to several charities as he had promised before it, but the rancor between him and his brothers had a deep and lasting effect on the Jacksons as a family, alienating him from them for most of his later life, and effectively ended the Jacksons as a performing group. The Jacksons besides Michael did make one more album in 1989, but aside from the concert celebrating Michael's 30 years as a solo artist in 2001, they never toured again during Michael's lifetime. The tour was also a financial disaster for promoter Chuck Sullivan, who along with his father Billy was eventually forced to sell the New England Patriots football team they owned, along with Foxborough Stadium, the team's home field, as a result of the losses he incurred. In November 1983, the Jacksons announced plans for a major tour in 1984 at a press conference, with Don King offering $3 million in upfront advances. The Jacksons had not lined up a promoter for the shows. In the spring of 1984, Chuck Sullivan, son of owner of the New England Patriots, Billy Sullivan, went to Los Angeles to see if he could get the Jacksons to choose the Sullivan Stadium, for the group's Boston area shows. Sullivan offered the Jacksons two-thirds of the tour's gross revenue against a guaranteed $40 million. Expected to gross $70 to $80 million, the deal was very generous to the Jacksons. Outside of negotiations, Sullivan's behavior on tour embarrassed the Jacksons on some occasions. At Washington's Robert F. Kennedy Stadium, he forgot his pass and was denied entry. Sullivan was particularly humiliated when the board of selectmen in Foxborough, where his family's team and stadium were located, uncharacteristically denied a permit for the concert, citing, the unknown element. In retrospect, it was suggested by news writers that the board's decision was racially motivated, although it was also stated that there had been continuing security concerns about the stadium during Patriots games and previous concerts, but the board had never denied permits on that basis before. To help defray the tour's costs, the Jacksons sought a corporate sponsor. They had all but concluded a lucrative deal with Quaker Oats when King came to them with a deal he had already signed with Pepsi. Although it would pay them less money, they had to take it and break off talks with Quaker. Part of the deal was that Michael, who did not drink Pepsi, would have to do two commercials. He made sure that his face appeared minimally in them to avoid overexposing his image. During filming of one of the two commercials, Michael suffered second and third degree burns on his scalp when a pyrotechnic malfunctioned, catching his hair on fire. Many people, including friends and associates of Michael, believe this incident is what sparked his problems with prescription drug abuse. King, Sullivan, and the Jacksons' father Joe Jackson, who no longer managed any of his sons by that point, came up with a way to generate additional revenue from ticket sales. Those wishing to attend would have to send a postal money order for $120 along with a special form to a lottery to buy blocks of four tickets at $30 apiece, seemingly to curtail scalpers. 
Upon receipt the money was to be deposited into a standard money market account earning 7% annual interest, it would take 6 to 8 weeks for the lottery to be held and money to be refunded to the unsuccessful purchasers. Since only 1 in 10 purchasers would win the lottery and receive tickets, there would be more money in the bank for that time period than there were tickets to sell, and they expected to earn 10 to 12 million dollars in interest. Joe, Jackie, Tito, Jermaine, Marlon, and Randy were in favor of the plan, but Michael was not, and he warned them that it would be a public relations disaster. The $30 ticket price was already higher than most touring acts, such as Prince and Bruce Springsteen, charged at the time and was compounded by the requirement to buy four. This put tickets out of reach of many of Michael's African-American fans who were not financially secure. When newspapers published the form for tickets to the first show in Kansas City in late June, fans lined up at stores before they opened to buy them. A local radio disc jockey said some newspapers were even stolen from lawns. On July 5, 1984, after receiving a letter from 11-year-old fan LaDonna Jones, who accused the Jacksons and their promoters of being selfish and just out for money, Michael held a press conference to announce changes in the tour's organization and also to announce that his share of the proceeds from the tour would be donated to charity. Jones later received VIP treatment at the Dallas concert. Afterwards, the procedures were modified, but all sales continued to be made by mail, except for the six final shows at Dodger Stadium, where tickets were also sold through Ticketmaster. Tickets were typically made available only a week to 10 days in advance, and many tickets ended up in the hands of ticket brokers. Tensions between Michael and his brothers increased during the tour. Michael stayed at his own hotels and flew between stops on a private jet while the rest of the family flew commercial. At one point he demanded that a publicist be fired and when he found out right before a show that she had not been, he refused to go on until she was. Michael was also disappointed that his idol James Brown had declined his invitation to join the group on stage at Madison Square Garden in New York City due to Brown's continued outrage about the ticket lottery. The other Jacksons also had grievances with Michael. He turned down a multi-million dollar offer from Paramount Pictures to film one of the shows that his brothers had accepted, only to have a crew he had hired show up to shoot its own film several nights later, they subsequently blocked its release. Despite a pre-tour agreement that only the Jacksons themselves could ride in the van chartered to take them to shows, Michael began taking child star Emmanuel Lewis along with them. Later, after a similar agreement over a helicopter that took the brothers to a show at Giants Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey, Michael showed up with Sean Lennon, son of John Lennon and Yoko Ono, and his brothers glared at him for the entire flight. Before the tour was halfway completed, the brothers were taking separate vehicles to concerts, staying on different floors of their hotels, and refusing to talk to each other on the way to shows. Meetings broke down among factions, with two lawyers frequently representing Michael's interests, another Germain's, and one more for Jackie, Tito, and Marlon. It was the worst experience Michael had ever had with his brothers, said a longtime family friend. Some were jealous, there was denial, the whole gamut of human emotions. The issues did not stop there, Jackie missed most of the tour because of a leg injury, which was described at the time as a knee injury incurred during strenuous rehearsals. Margaret Maldonado, the mother of two of Jermaine's children, has alleged that Jackie in fact broke his leg in an automobile accident, his first wife Enid intentionally ran him over in a parking lot after catching him with another woman. Jackie would, however, eventually recover and was able to rejoin his brothers on stage for the last portion of the tour. At one point, Michael became so exhausted from the stress of quarreling with his brothers that he was placed under medical care. By the later shows on the tour, its novelty had worn off and the strains were having an effect. Although the Victory album was certified double platinum by the RIAA for sales of 2 million copies, the shows were failing to sell out. Things got worse as the tour reached its final leg on the West Coast. In late November, the shows at Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe, Arizona, just outside Phoenix, were cancelled. Officially the reason was that Jermaine was too sick with the flu to perform, but there was some speculation that slow ticket sales played a role as well. Sullivan was so short of cash he stopped payment on a $1.9 million check to the group after the Vancouver dates. Immediately afterwards, he suffered a minor heart attack, and left the hospital early to renegotiate with the Jacksons again, claiming losses of $5 to $6 million. By this time, the parties were no longer meeting in person. 
Sullivan and his father quietly put the word out that the Patriots and their stadium were for sale. Their $100 million asking price for the combined package made more sense when the Patriots qualified for Super Bowl XX after the next season, the first time they had ever done so. Even after making the Super Bowl, the team's revenue was not nearly enough for the Sullivans to service the debt from the victory tour. At one point, they were so close to bankruptcy that the NFL had to advance them $4 million to make their payroll. Sullivan's woes increased when his wife filed for divorce, and he had to set up a luxury box at Sullivan Stadium as his personal living quarters. The Sullivans finally gave up and sold the Patriots in 1988. Despite plans for a European and Australian leg, at the rain-soaked tour finale in Los Angeles Dodger Stadium, after six sold-out shows, all the drama behind the tour would cultivate in Michael announcing at the end of the show that this would be the last time they would all perform together, much to his brother's surprise. I like to say, this is our last and final tour. And I think this is our farewell tour. Y'all been wonderful, it's been a long 20 years, and we love you all. As a result, the plans to go to Europe and Australia were ended. Michael's announcement generated some backlash from his brothers. King stated, There's no way Michael should be as big as he is and treat his family the way he does. He feels his father done him wrong? His father may have done some wrong, but he also had to do a whole lot right. What Michael's got to realize is that he's an He's one of the megastars of the world, but he's still going to be a megastar. Michael was so upset when he learned of King's remarks that he called his lawyer John Branca and demanded to sue his ass. Branca calmed him down and persuaded him to drop the idea. Shortly after the tour ended a longtime strain would remain in the Jackson family, 